All right, so this isn't even our first time through Colorado this year. It's our second time, and all of this different stuff in the South, to tell you the truth, are some of the most impressive and coolest and most unique national parks that I've seen almost anywhere. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to Colorado for a second time as we head east across the United States again. There's a lot more to Colorado than the Rocky Mountains, um, at least I think. Today we're going to go check out two of Colorado's four national parks, starting with Mesa Verde, which like you said, surprise, is in Colorado. Yeah. Honestly, I bet you if you listed off and said Mesa Verde to people, they'd be like, what's that? Right, so it's and probably, by the way, you wouldn't guess that it's in Colorado. Yeah, exactly. Right? Hello. Don't want you guys. Is oh, it? Really? Yeah, Park Service birthday today. Oh, oh wow. cool. what a great day. Yeah, perfect. Well, I guess we'll go to two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Mesa Verde, we'll see, is like just a different national park because it's protecting historic sites as opposed to just nature. But there's kind of an interesting story here that when national parks were starting to become an idea, Yellowstone was a national park, Yosemite was protected but wasn't, they didn't really know what national parks were. Theodore Roosevelt passed something that's called the Antiquities Act, and that allowed the president to designate areas of historical or cultural significance. It was really to protect things like ancient Puebloan dwellings uh, and artifacts and that sort of thing as national monuments. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the same heritage as Mesa Verde, you know, and why Mesa Verde contributed to the idea of what national parks are too. Mesa Verde is, of course, most famous for its cliff dwellings, the ancestral Puebloan architecture. But here's the thing, you have to take a guided tour to go inside them, and in 2020 there are no tours, so I don't believe you can actually go inside any of them. However, you can still see them from a lot of overlooks, which might be just as good to tell you the truth. I haven't seen it yet, but we'll keep you updated. So, okay, I've seen this thing like, you know, in postcards a million times, but the perspective's a lot different, like how big of a canyon it is, right? Yeah. Don't forget, there's a few cool places to go in Mesa Verde. They all look like that, kind of. All right, so we are kind of heading our way out of Mesa Verde uh, National Park, and definitely pretty cool. Like, I had no clue what to expect. Stuff's very well preserved, um, really cool vantage points. It looks like there's some cool hikes when things are open to go down to it. Oh, and by the way, happy, happy birthday, National Parks <laughs> System or something. Free day. Yes. So uh, if anyone comes on August 25th, 2021, it'll be free. Okay, so next one, Great Sand Dunes National Park. Maybe you haven't heard of this one. It's pretty new and it's different than White Sands, which is the newest one, which is kind of confusing. But 
Great Sand Dunes has something that's unique. They actually have campgrounds that are for primitive camping that are free, first come, first serve, that are inside the park. So this is going to be, or at least was going to be our first night camping inside a national park. Here's the catch. You have to get to them by going on basically an off-roading road that goes through the dunes and through a stream. And it's actually directly where the thunderstorm is right now, so. We'll have to see if we can actually make it through. <laughs> okay, so right now I got out my little uh, um, air down kit. Basically, we're gonna pull air out of the tires. It makes the tire wider and you want it, it's like sand is like snow. You want the tire to kind of um, be a little wider so you sink into it less. So you have less chance of getting stuck. For people that go off road, not that I do it a whole lot, but you can buy this little device. It screws onto your uh, valve stem of your tire. basically have a complete airflow. So far it's shaping up to be a little bit more of an adventure than Mesa Verde, right? Yeah. Good morning from Great Sand Dunes. If you want to be technical, this actually is a national preserve right next to a national park. They work essentially the same way, but the verbiage is, is that a national preserve has extractive capabilities, meaning that you might be able to mine or log or hunt on them. Pretty cool place to go. It's a little bit of an adventure to get here, but honestly not too bad. Most stock vehicles with four-wheel drive would do fine here. I just think it's so cool that it's inside a national park or preserve, but uh, you can't free camp in a car in any other national park, as far as I'm aware. Might have to Google that and let me know. Did you know this is where they filmed the live action Aladdin? Oh, really? No. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe. <laughs> hmm. Let me just say that this was kind of a not what I pictured Colorado being kind of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's just bring the beach to the mountains and make a mountain out of the beach. <laughs> gotta go from mountains to sand in the same day, so you know you gotta be versatile. You know, if you're landlocked, you don't really need the ocean to have a good time at the beach, right? <laughs> All right, just in case this national park couldn't make me any happier, they have beach showers. What a treat. So one last thing to do once we're done is um, put more air in the tires because we're down to about 22 PSI. And honestly, you don't want to do that on a highway because you just, it's too much heat that builds up and you'll have sidewall failures. So less car geek uh, jargon, um, fill your tires up after you aired them down, otherwise you'll blow up, right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, so this isn't even our first time through Colorado this year, it's our second time and all of this different stuff in the South, to tell you the truth, are some of the most impressive and coolest and most unique national parks that I've seen almost Agreed. anywhere. I just think that both Mesa Verde and Great Sand Dunes for separate reasons actually are some of the most unique national parks I've ever been to. Yeah. And uh, they were some of the most exciting ones, to tell you the truth. Yeah, and they weren't super packed with people. I think they're a little more off the beaten path, so. I would call that colorful Colorado. Yeah.
All right, so defunct isn't the right word, but maybe demoted. Um, by the way, welcome back to the plains where it seems like there's nothing to do, uh, but it always seems like we find the weirdest stuff here. So this is one of the weirdest properties in the National Park Service, and it's only like 15 miles away from Joe Exotic's zoo. Google Maps By the way, still this is it. Joe Exotic Zoo. Yeah. Um, it's called Chickasaw National Recreation Area, but it actually used to be called Platte National Park, and it was the smallest national park in the system. 